So to connect to your server using FileZilla on Mac, it'll be similar on PC, go ahead and open it up. This is the screen you're going to get at first. It's a little bit overwhelming. It's part of why that I usually suggest CyberDuck for Mac users because they're not used to all this stuff and the CyberDuck interface is a little bit cleaner and simpler. Once you figure out what all these different windows mean, it won't be as confusing anymore and you'll see the power of it. So to connect the first time, you could use this little quick connect up here, but it'll go better for you if you make a permanent bookmark by clicking this little site manager icon up in the top left. Go ahead and click it and open it up and you'll have the chance to create a new site. Click new site and give it a name first thing. I'm going to call mine Lauren and Brenton dot com because that's the domain name I have. You could give it any name you want. So here's where you need to get the information that you got in your email assuming you followed the prep work for this course. So here's a little email and my domain is right here laurenandbrenton.com. So the domain and the host go ahead and put domain in for host. Now the reason it says host is because what this is connecting you to is the server and you can either connect to the server through your domain or through the host. So right now you're being hosted on shoutleaf.com so you can actually type into the host area shoutleaf.com and do everything else that I tell you except for this being different and you'll still be able to connect because you're still connecting to the same server. But let's just leave it as laurenandbrenton.com just put your domain because it'll be easier to remember and this is going to be uh, it'll it'll work in the future if you ever have a different host don't mess with the port and don't add any weird things to the host don't try to add www don't try to add http this isn't even http and leave these alone as well logon type is normal username copy from the email Sometimes on some servers you have to put it almost like an email address at the server name. But you don't have to do that here. So if you ever get really confused doing this in the future, think that your username might include the host name on it as well. But you don't need that for this host. So go ahead and copy the password. Obviously I've changed this password by the time I've uploaded the video. And you can add comments here. The next thing you'll want to do is go into the advanced tab and change the default remote directory to forward slash www. This will simplify things a lot for you because you'll get into the folder that you are going to do most of your stuff to. This is basically the root directory of your website. So I can go ahead and click OK. So now that you've added that into your bookmark, you can go here again, select the site, and connect in the future and you won't have to enter this information in again. Now you see it just did a bunch of stuff up here. This is the message log. This shows you all of the manual commands that the FTP client does when talking to the server. We don't actually need to really see this so I'm going to go ahead and go to view message log and uncheck it and now it hides it. Down here this is the transfer queue. This is a list of files that are currently being uploaded or, or downloaded. I'm going to leave that down here just so you can see it. Although I'm going to drag the window down just a little bit so that this part isn't in view. All right. So what's remaining is on the left here, your local hard drive, and on the right here, the website. So this is actually the root path of laurenandbrenton.com. Now remember I told you to put in www? That's because the www directory is the root path of the website. There's actually one directory up above it. This top part here shows the file structure and this shows you the, the folder that you're in currently. So you can see that this is actually like the top directory. And I can click up here to go into it. And there's all this weird stuff. For the most part, you can ignore this. www is actually a shortcut or an alias, a pointer to public underscore HTML. This is the standard root document, is public underscore HTML. It's the same thing as www. 
We'll leave it at www just to keep things simple. CGI bin is an old kind of archaic thing that we don't need anymore, so we're going to delete that. Okay, now let's look at the local side, this side here. You see I've got a list of my files and I've got my hard drive, but it's kind of like uh, it's in the root path. So it might take a while for you to figure out how to navigate through this to your desktop. But on the left here, this is your root of your hard drive. So go ahead and click that and scroll through until you find how to get to your desktop. On a Mac, the way to do this is find users, then find your username, then scroll down, find your desktop, and then scroll down and find the folder. So if you don't want to have to do all of that again, what you can do is go into this bookmark again, go to advanced, and set the default local directory. Do the exact same thing, desktop, webmaking 101, choose. And now, when I load up in the future, it'll take me right here every time. So you may not even need these top panels anymore after you get that set up. But note that if I minimize this, this webmaking 101 folder with hello.html, that is this folder right here with hello.html. So you see hello.html and hello.html, they're, they're the same folder, it's just different views of the same thing. And you'll see some hidden files that start with a dot. For the most part, you can ignore those. Now, the way to upload to my server is to either drag from here into here, or you can actually, they've updated it so that you can drag from any window into here. So here's the first way I'm going to do it. Go ahead and drag this in here, and it's updated it. So now this is on laurenandbrenton.com in the root directory. So let's open a browser and check that out. laurenandbrenton.com Now if I just go to the domain, you'll see an index. This index won't always be visible, but it is right now until we change some things. Now I could click on this to get to the file. You see that it shows the file right there. I'm going to type in the entire URL. And it shows that I've just uploaded this hello. Now you want to see something interesting. This is actually very important to understand. This is on the internet now, and it's a copy. You can see here it is, a copy of this one. They're the same file, but this one is on a hard drive on the server. This is on my hard drive here. So if I make a change to this file, go ahead and open with text edit, and I'm going to say hello. This is a local change. Now save. Move this out of the way. Now I've made a change to it here, but I did not make a change to it on the server yet. So if I reload this, it doesn't change on the server even though I changed it. Now you can still look at this file in the browser locally by opening a new tab, a different tab, and dragging it in. Now look at this. This is the path of my local file and it says hello this is a local change because I made a local change to it. File users Brenton desktop that's the path of this file. Now here it is on the internet on a different hard drive a copy of it but it's an outdated copy because it doesn't say hello this is a local change. Um, now I'm refreshing it. Now if I were to make more changes to this add a couple more exclamation marks and save and then go back to the local file and refresh watch the exclamation marks there we go and then again online no change can you see what's gonna what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to update this by copying this over on top of it and overwriting it so you can either again drag from here into here or if you want to make things a little bit simpler this is kind of what um, this is kind of what cyberduck is like you can hide this whole left area if you don't want to if you don't want to see it. So I'm going to hide the local directory tree. I'm going to move this all the way over. And now this is bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag directly into it from what I'm working on. This is the updated file. This is the old file on the internet. Drag it over and let go. 
it's going to ask me, do I want to overwrite it or do I have these other options? What I want to do is overwrite it. And actually, I'm going to always overwrite. OK. Now it's updated it. So I can drag up over here and look at my file on the internet. And if I refresh it, you see the change has appeared.